Today I'd like to talk about records, what makes them great, how to take care of them, and how to get started with them as a beginner. So let's get going. So as you may know, this channel is about stuff. And one kind of stuff that almost everybody has is stuff to play music. You may listen to music on your phone. You might listen to it on your computer. I like to listen to music on a turntable. I think there's a lot of great reasons to listen to vinyl. It's the perfect size for album art. You can read the lyrics. Uh, it's fun to listen to with other people. The records hold their value. So when you wanna pass them on to someone else, you can sell them. There's lots of great reasons. But the one reason I really like records is because they're almost the opposite of algorithmic listening. If you listen to music on your phone and you let an algorithm pick your songs, your musical taste never gets a chance to grow. Records force you to have a little more discipline than that. Rather than listening to one three minute song, you're gonna listen to a whole side, about 20 minutes of music. And you're gonna listen to it in the order that the producer and the band intended. This is healthy. I think this is good. I'm a firm believer that if you don't have a balanced information diet, your opinion gets sick. Likewise, if you never challenge your musical opinion and you only feed it the same stuff you've been listening to again and again, how will your musical taste ever grow? Anyway, one thing I notice is that a lot of people are curious about records. They hear they're cool again. I don't think they ever stopped being cool, but people hear they're cool again. And now they'd like to try them, but they're not really sure. They think they need a lot of stuff. It sounds really complicated. There's a lot of judgment. People will tell you, you can't do this. You can't do that. What I hope is that you won't be intimidated to try. If you think records might be for you, my guess is they probably are. It doesn't have to be expensive and it can be really fun. Anyway, let's get into it. So obviously if you're gonna start listening to records, you're gonna need a few things. You're gonna need a turntable, an amp, a preamp, and speakers. I'm not a fan of the all-in-one. All of these things do pretty important jobs. It's good if they're separate. I keep running into people who think you can just plug headphones into a turntable and listen. This is not possible. The signal that comes from a turntable is a special signal. It's a little different than a tape deck, a CD player, or your computer. So you need an amplifier that will amplify the sound to the speakers that either on its own or through a preamp understands a phono input. It will say phono on the back by the RCA plugs or on the front by the selector knob. So once you've got all those four things set up, you're ready to go, they're all connected, they work. Next step, you need a record. You need a flat, clean record. So what do those two things mean? Well, uh, it's gotta be flat. How do we make sure the record's flat? Well, we store it correctly. When you bought it at the store, what position was it in? It was standing upright. So when you keep it at home, you should also keep it upright. You wanna keep records out of the sun, away from the heat, after all, they're formed in heat. So you don't wanna expose them to heat again and potentially risk changing their shape. And you wanna stack them vertically. You don't wanna put them one on top of the other like a giant sandwich. Records can get heavy. You put enough of them on top of each other, the ones on top will crush the ones on the bottom. That can cause warping, and that can cause ring wear on the jacket. Way better to stand them up on end and give them enough room to breathe. It's also easier to sort through so you can pick the record you want to play. So as well as flat, the record has to be clean. How do we clean a record? Well, the drag with records is that they're really prone to static, and that makes them like dust magnets. This is a real problem. The grooves in a record are really small. Tiny little elements of dust get in there, and you're going to hear it. If you keep your record clean, you won't hear the pops, you won't hear the crackles, at least not as much, and your listening experience will be way better. So there's two kinds of cleaning, and I'd recommend for any first setup that you get a dry cleaning record brush, a carbon fiber brush, just like this one. As you start to play the record, you put it on the table, making sure the mat is clean, and then you gently put the brush bristles down on the grooves of the record, let it rotate a couple of times, slowly move the brush inwards towards the spindle, and lift it off. Some people move the brush away from the spindle, but I believe that if you move the brush towards the spindle and then gently lift off the middle, it grounds any static charges that are on the brush. It keeps the dust that the brush collects from flying back to the record. So that's dry cleaning, and you should do that for each side of each record you play every time you play it. Every time you play it. That's one great way to keep things clean. Sometimes you get a record that's even more dirty. In that case, you gotta go to a wet clean. There's a lot of different ways to do this. I'll go into it in another video. Suffice it to say, I use a spin clean. It works pretty well. For really dirty records, it's a great idea. It also helps fight static. One more thing about keeping records clean. I think you probably know this. Don't touch the playable surface. Your fingers have oil on them. And if you get that oil on the playable surface, that's gonna attract dust and the dust is gonna stick. Always handle a record by the edges or by the center label. Don't touch the playable surface. Especially if you're into buying used records, which I really like to do. I mean, why buy something new when it already exists? But often the sleeves are old and ratty. Maybe they started with poor quality to begin with. I usually change out 
set the sleeves that come on the inside of the record. I like to use these MoFi sleeves. They've got an onion skin inside that helps fight static, and they're really gentle and soft on the record. I'll also make sure to put the jacket into a jacket sleeve. That way it's protected too. So now we've got all the components we want. We've got the uh, record. It's clean and flat and ready to go. we got a couple of things to do to set up our turntable before we can play. You don't have to do this every time, but you do have to make sure it's right. You have to balance the tone arm. You want to make sure that the tone arm is set so that the tracking force or the amount of force that's pushing down on the stylus while it rests in the groove is correct. Every cartridge is a little different. The manual will tell you. There's two ways to do this. I have a little digital scale. It's pretty cool. It was like $30 on Amazon. That tells me exactly how much force is pushing down on that needle so I can get it exactly right. But if you don't have that, no sweat. The main weight for the arm is at the back. Basically what you do is you rotate the weight. It moves back along the arm to the point where the arm is eventually perfectly balanced. It doesn't rise up, it doesn't fall down, it just stays level all on its own. We call that zero. Dial the little plastic knob at the front of the weight to zero. Now you know what zero is. You can take the whole weight, rotate it so that it moves down the arm towards the stylus, and engage the number that represents the correct weight for your your cartridge. For my cartridge, which is an Ortofon 2M bronze, the recommended tracking force is 1.5 grams. So I turn the weight to 1.5 grams. Pretty easy. So on to aligning the cartridge. If your turntable came new, probably your cartridge came attached and is likely already aligned. The cartridge needs to be aligned in order for the stylus to sit properly in the groove of the record. If you need to align the cartridge, obviously there's a little wiggle room here. Your cartridge could mount a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, a little forward, a little backward. Getting it positioned just right is a really important way to make sure the stylus fits into the groove of the record perfectly. This is a little bit complicated. I'll make a different video about how to do that. Suffice it to say, there are little gauges that help you twist and turn and check to make sure the cartridge is attached at just the right angle. Finally, there's an anti-skate adjustment. If you look at a record, the optical illusion provided by the groove, and there really is only one groove in a record, it clearly shows that the momentum moves inward toward the spindle of the record player. That's the direction your tone arm wants to travel. Once it gets in the groove, the force drives it right into the middle of the record. In other words, if the arm isn't pushing down properly on the record, it'll skate right across the top of the record in towards the middle. Anti-skate helps sort of balance that out. Some record players just have a little knob that you rotate. It's pretty easy to do. Other ones like mine have a little weight. You just adjust where the weight is attached to the arm in order to change the force the weight puts on the arm. In the end, you just want to make sure that that centripetal force is counterbalanced. And there you go. I'll make another video about how to set up a turntable, but all of the information about how to do it should be in your turntable manual. A couple other things you might want to check. Obviously, if we're going to do all this fine adjustment, we want to have started on a solid level surface. If the room you're listening to music in is really dry, the lack of humidity can increase the amount of static, and that can draw dust and debris to your record like a bumblebee to a flower. It's not a bad idea to have a humidifier somewhere in the room where you listen to music. You don't want it moist, but you definitely don't want it too dry either. You might want to check the speed of your turntable, especially if it's a used one. My turntable has a little light that turns on when it locks into the correct speed. So I know that 33 and a third is actually 33 and one thirds rotations per minute. But if you really want to check, there are phone apps that are pretty useful for this. I use one called RPM. You just put your phone on the turntable, hopefully not with a mat that's super skiddy, or else your phone could go flying, and then the phone will tell you how fast it's spinning. It should be pretty accurate. It goes green when it's accurate enough, and it'll be red if your speed is off. I really like knowing. It's a great way to go shopping for used turntables too. Never buy a used turntable if you haven't checked its speed. Back in the day, vintage turntables almost always had an auto up or an auto return feature, meaning that when the record was finished playing, the arm would automatically lift and potentially even return to its armrest. This is not so popular anymore. A lot of new turntables don't have this feature. That's something you want to look for. A lot of people just find this feature convenient and they really miss it if they don't have it. Just something to think about. Obviously, since it spends most of its time gliding through a groove on what can sometimes be called a dust magnet, the stylus can get pretty dirty too. Most makers of cartridges will provide you with a stylus brush when you buy it. Make sure to use a stylus brush. Don't cheap out and use the record brush or something else. Just always use a stylus brush. And most importantly, always when you're using the stylus brush, brush from back to front. That's the direction that the record plays, so that's the direction that the stylus is designed to receive force in, so that's the way you gotta clean it back to front. So once you get all of those down, or even if you just get some of those down, you'll be okay. I think an important thing to remember here is it doesn't have to be 
a big deal. These things were made for regular consumers to listen to music to. It's not true that you can't hurt a record, but the fact is they're a little hardier, I think, than most people believe. Definitely they're hardy enough that you shouldn't be afraid to try it as a hobby if you want to. Anyway, I hope that helped you out. I'll be making some more videos about some of the more complex parts of setting up a turntable and cleaning a record, but to get you started, I hope that helps. If it did, please feel free to like or subscribe. That really helps me out. I would really appreciate that. Even if you don't, if you could leave a comment in the comment section below, I'd really appreciate it. Comments help me make the channel better, and that's what I want.